Hello, and welcome everybody to the season premiere of Key Points. It's a networking show. Yes, it's a show where we're going to be discussing vital concepts about networking career. Routing, switching, firewalling, data center, ACI, SD-WAN, SD access, name it. Anything that can cross your mind when it comes to network engineering. I am Ahmed Mofta, a technical training and design manager here in Cisco, and this is the first episode. Well, what do we have here? We are going to talk about SDN, Software Defined Networking. First of all, let's welcome this guy with us. This is, give it up to Mr. Key. Yeah, we're going to call this guy Mr. Key and he's going to be with us throughout the series, throughout the episodes, and he's going to be our network engineer where we're expecting things to be done by this engineer. Okay, so in terms of SDN, what is Mr. Key going to do? Well, uh, before diving into SDN, I would just like to demonstrate how Mr. Key is not having a pleasant time dealing with tens or even hundreds or maybe even thousands of network devices in a traditional network field. You know, he's got to just manage all those devices by himself. Maybe he has a team. Maybe he's just, you know, alone. Who knows? But the bottom line is he's trying to earn his living by managing those devices. And when I say manage the devices, I mean configure them one by one, of course, and then also monitor and troubleshoot anything that might happen with those devices. It's complex. It's not easy. I know <laughs> this is our job and this is what he also does, but it's kind of complicated, which is difficult to configure, difficult to maintain. Who knows what kind of uh, configuration you're dealing with? Who knows how many sites you're dealing with or when it comes to configuration, yes, you might be a CCIE, double CCIE, triple, it doesn't matter. But end of the day, this is going to be difficult and that's going to give you a poor user experience. And guess what? Mr. Key's not very happy and he might start looking for another job. We want to maintain this guy. So what do you want to do? Well, technically, let's talk about the device. Let's talk about any network device. Devices in the networking field, let's say routers, switches, any kind of network device. We're talk, we're, we're uh, looking at some uh, catalyst uh, 8,000 switches right here. And uh, whether this is a catalyst, whether this is a router, it doesn't really matter because they are made of three major planes. Can you pause for a second? Do you remember the planes? Any device has three planes. Yeah, remember? Well, yeah, you got it. The management plane, when you manage or when Mr. Key decides to manage those devices by SSHing or telnetting or even using a GUI to access those routers and switches and push the configuration. This is going to be handled by the management plane. Let's not forget that the second plane is your control plane, which enables those devices to send control plane messages through, uh, you know, to, to each other. So let's say, for example, these are routers that try to establish some kind of OSPF neighborship. That's going to happen through the control plane. And then when, when they become neighbors, they need to make sure that they do their job and every single network device <laughs> anywhere is responsible for forwarding the data traffic. So that's where we call this the data or forwarding plane. Why do we need to even think about this? We need to remember these three planes because, hey, in traditional networking, every single plane is independent, which makes it difficult, again, on each network engineer, including Mr. T, to manage those devices, configure them, monitor them, and in the end, this is going to be complicated a complicated job. We want to make our life easier. So what happened? Well, what happened is SDN was created. We we're not just talking about now, we're just talking about way back, let's say 2010, 2011, way back, okay? This is where the fundamentals and concept, the concept of SDN, yes, SDN is a concept, it's a notion where you're trying to deal with those planes separately. Oh, well, tell me more about that. Let's look at this diagram. Look at this. This is a bunch of infrastructure infrastructure devices. And yes, we're looking at a bunch of cubes, I know. <laughs> but I'm just trying to um, deal with those cubes as if they are any kind of network device. Doesn't matter whether it's a router, switch, server, firewall. Doesn't matter what kind of device. Because at the end of the day, every single network device is made of three planes. Yes, management plane, control plane, and data plane. So what do you want to do? 
you want to make your life easier? You want to make Mr. T's job easier? Yeah, who cares what he does? But anyways, you need a central management unit. You need a device which is going to abstract the control plane from each and every device and be able to manage those devices, no matter how many devices you have, centrally. So you're going to have that layer which represents a controller. You need a controller which is going to be able to manage, who knows, how many devices you have don't forget, we want to make our job easier. But let me ask you a question. What's easier? Dealing with those devices using GUI, graphical user interface? Let's just write it down. Okay, well, I do have a pen, though, so I want to use it. Uh, so, yeah. Is it easier to use the GUI or is it easier to use the CLI? What do you think? I mean, I'm not talking about which is accurate and which is more geeky, okay? I'm talking about the easiest. Pause for a second. Yeah, you got it with a G. GUI. So you want to make sure that you have the easiest possible experience. So let's put on top of this applications which are going to be facing from on one end the user, which is you, the network engineer, and from the other end it's going to be facing the controller so that you're going to be dealing with that GUI to be able to push as many configuration options to those tens or hundreds of devices without even thinking about suffering. And these are going to be considered policies, but you will need to just hmm, geek out sometimes. And you want to be like, oh, how will the application deal with the controller layer? And how will the controller layer translate your intent into whatever CLI commands that the routers or switches understand? And the answer is three words or three letters, APIs application programmable interface and this is the interface between the controller layer and the application layer from the northbound or the interface between the controllers and the infrastructure devices from the southbound so if i were to define sdn what would it be i mean yeah you, you don't need to have a specific definition but you can think about it but I might just give you a solid answer. Here it is, software defined networking. What it is in a nutshell, centralizes. It centralizes management, yeah, by abstracting, watch that word, abstracting the control plane from the data plane, yes, and then be able to manage that infrastructure centrally from that controller. All right, well, that's good. That makes our life easier, but guess what? That's only about managing and configuring. What if I told you that we need to utilize AI, yes, artificial intelligence, to be able to collect information about your infrastructure and draw some trends? Yes, to be able to monitor and troubleshoot your network automatically, not just push configuration, but monitor and troubleshoot the network automatically. And this is the introduction to what Cisco calls network assurance. Using AI, well, to, to be able to monitor and assure easy management and easy um, troubleshooting and monitoring without even having to interfere. This is what we decide to define as IBN. Intent-based networking is SDN plus assurance so if i were to define it what it is well you can see it right here it uses ai to add assurance to the network so you can automate a complete life cycle and continuously align with the network to business needs not just to be fulfilling your job but you want to make sure that your job fulfills the needs of the business so i want to be clear here about something sdn is an open standard yes this is a concept which is used by lots of vendors in this it world and this is the foundational architecture for decoupling again as i said the data plane and the control plane well what did cisco do to contribute in this field well cisco has sdn as well and ibn and this is the architecture for the sdn implementation it's the intent-based networking where we have products, several products, three major products to be accurate, and they're very f famous. Uh, it all started way back in 2013 when they first introduced ACI for the data center. This is Cisco's SDN for the data center using Nexus 9K switches. Also, they kept going forward and they introduced SD Access for, for the enterprise LAN. 
they did not give up and they keep, kept on pushing and they also introduced SD-WAN for, of course, the Enterprise WAN. Keep few words in mind when it comes to controllers because that's the most important word, controllers. That's the central device that manages any network. When it comes to ACI, the application-centric infrastructure, the controller is the APIC. When it comes to SD access, your controller is the DNA center, the digital network architecture center, and SD-WAN has the vManage. Okay, that being said, let's hit the key points for today. Well, first of all, SDN is the abstraction of control plane from the data plane. This is gonna centrally manage your network which is gonna automate your network and make it easier on you network engineers. Whereas IBN uses AI, artificial, artificial intelligence, to add assurance, telemetry, monitoring, and troubleshooting to your network, which is again, as I said, it's gonna fully automate the network and this is gonna reduce the network complexity, hmm, which is eventually gonna make Mr. Key happier. I'm going to wait for you again here at Cisco U and we're going to always experience new key points about networking. Thanks for watching.